Hello, everybody, and welcome to the HCW podcast. Uh, this week's episode, we will be covering Friday Night SmackDown, Elimination Chamber, Monday Night Raw, uh, Wednesday Night Dynamite. Stay tuned for the review of all the action. Roll intro. HCW Reviews. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. My name is Frozzy, as always, the host on this particular podcast, joined by my co-host, Ray Russell. How are you doing today, bud? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, it's been my day off today. I've got an interview f- uh, interview filmed. Um, it's a week later than expected, but at least it's going to be out uh, with Ruby Roberts, which she was really lovely to speak to. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Just like like I said before we went on recording, feeling a bit a little bit ropey, but you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. Got two days off to recover now, and uh, next week I'm moving out. So yeah, uh, all go. And you're off next week as well, which makes me moving even worse. Yep, we planned that really well. Um, yeah, DP we'll see, has got to edit it. within a day. Yeah, and it normally takes him a month. So um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. There might be a there might be a podcast episode next week. There might not. Speak to DP. Don't bear. Well, yeah, uh, we we will try and keep it running like clockwork. It might work out that I might be on a video up until Dynamite, and then it might be DP on his own. Um, purely because my internet cuts off on our recording day, so how can you yeah, do DP we'll... on your own? <laughs> You've not watched many videos. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, so it could just be that I'm there for SmackDown and Raw and not for Dynamite, and it'll look a bit weird. But it's purely because I can't. Uh, my internet won't be on for reviewing Dynamite, so it'll just be DP solo randomly in the middle of a video. But yeah, solo DP. Uh, enjoy that um i'm sure you will but yeah what we're going to do is we're going to get straight in and we'll start reviewing smackdown wonderful I'm kind of, i thought you were going to say one more word before we kicked in uh that's what no, i tried not to burp dead loud <laughs> yeah um so smackdown february 17th so as usual i've watched elimination chamber by now because i'm that guy um so we kicked off with i've tried to make up team names and i've stumped myself over it i think i've written ron ron Liv, which i'm guessing is raquel rodriguez and Liv morgan i'm hoping that's the team no ron les <laughs> Yeah, no, oh, you're probably Ronsla. 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 That's what I've written there, yeah. yeah, versus Nazi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's real odd. Um, so, yeah, that's the team of Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler versus uh, Shotzi and Natalia? Nazi. Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible name, and I've just realised. Um, I rate this three stars. I really enjoyed it. Like, it was better than expected because I thought it was just going to be a typical. Because WWE have had times where women's wrestling is really great, and recently it's just been slowly... Anything that's not main card has just been short and sweet. Yeah. Uh, but both teams look great. Um, great offense from uh, both teams, and I rate it three stars. I just expect uh, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Uh, yeah. I'll be in all honest. Did you catch that down in Raw? Yes. Wonderful. Um... So, like, overall, yeah, that was um, a decent matchup. And I'll be honest, I don't remember who won it. I'm believing it's uh, going to be Baze this time. Yeah, it, no, it was. Uh, Rousey grabbed her in the armbar and shot Oh, yeah, she had the air. And, yeah, because Liv passed out, didn't she? Not Liv. Why do I keep yeah. saying Liv? Uh, you got Liv on the brain. Yeah, worth it, yeah, there's worth it. Anyway, up next <laughs> we had um, Hit Row, awful as usual. Um, the rapping was ass. <laughs> Um, Bray yeah. White comes out of nowhere with um, Uncle Audi. They destroy Hit Row just to bury him into the ground even more. Um, yep. And then Bray White decides, oh yeah, whoever wins out of Lesnar, Lesnar versus Lashley, I've got next. Yeah, no, that's so random. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's Lashley? Because technically? Yeah. Yeah. I um, think it is. Unless they make it triple threat. Yeah. Oh, that would be a really odd match, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we had... Do I get Lesnar on the card, though? No. Yeah, no, definitely. But I can, I, I'm can. i still hoping for Lesnar Gunther. It's an incredible match. Uh, we had the Bang Rose versus the Raiders. Um, I rated this uh, three and a quarter stars. Best match of the night. Um, it was just them hitting each other really, really hard. The Raiders should have yeah. won. 
because it makes no sense that the only the only part good thing that happens to the Raiders is they jumped the Bang Bros the other week in yeah. a match they've lost was. Yeah, I predicted the Raiders purely based off the thinking, and we said it last week on the pod that we thought the Raiders would go over in this match because it made sense. Yeah. So I picked him and he lost. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was a good match. It's just I don't like. I don't see what they're doing with the Raiders. The it's like bring yeah. it's like the hit row thing. They brought them back to lose continuously. The Raiders have been built up promos and stuff like that, and they've lost more than they've won. Yeah. Um, we had some stuff with Mysterio and Santos about the respect afterwards, and then we had Cross appearing again. Just your yeah. usual crappy Cross promo at this point. Um, Oscar versus Liv. This is what I was thinking of of um, the passing out. Um, yeah. That was it. So yeah, I read it two and three quarters. Um, it was fun. Like there was a lot of brawling and stuff like that. Um, and then Oscar basically just took control and um, uh, choked out Liv, and she passed out. And good old she, she tapped. She tapped. Yep. I've completely missed what's going on wrestling was it? Yeah, I've... no. Did Liv pass out she last tapped. week? No, she passed out when remember when she fought Rousey at Extreme Rules? Like ages ago. No, no, she definitely she... Pa- Oh no, she passed out in the chamber with Oscar and Fingy doing yeah. the air. Uh, right, yeah, but the thing that annoyed me about a tap in here is that in matches previously, she wanted to be like seen as a badass and didn't tap to yeah. Rousey, but now she's tapping to Oscar. And it's like, make it make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's <laughs> happening in wrestling, clearly, because I have got yeah. I forgot half this show. Um, <laughs> Gumpfer was up next. Uh, Moss will fall. So Gumpfer versus Moss. Two and three quarters. Moss fooled. Um, <laughs> it was all right. Um... It was one of the weaker Gunther matches, but I think that's more of that he's fighting Riddick Mask and no one cares. Um, yeah. It was fine. Gunther needs Lesnar. It's, it's mad because it's one of the worst Gunther matches, but that's one of the best matches from Moss I've yeah. seen in a long time. Yeah. And it's a bad Gunther match. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Gunther retains. Gunther needs Lesnar. That's all I, that's yeah, all I want to see in my life. Yeah. Um, and this was building. That was the main event. So this was building up to uh, Zayn in Montreal. Um, so he comes back to his original theme, which was good. Um, Montreal goes ecstatic. Um, he says this is like a once in a lifetime moment for him. Then he says um, something in French, which I can't remember. I've got it translated, which was like um, he basically swore and in, in French. Um, well, he Reigns. says "fuck you, Roman." Yeah, and then um, you're going down, and then. That's the end of SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah, it was... That was the right thing to do. They didn't have... There was no nothing physical, anything like that. It was just Sami Zayn in his own town, soaking in the atmosphere. Exactly. And that's what it needed. So, yeah, I mean, SmackDown, like you said, it was just... like There was a couple of good matches on there compared to previous weeks. No, uh, but, yeah, it was just sort of there at the same time. Uh, but yeah, I, di- I didn't think it was the worst show in the world. No, no, it wasn't um, bad. It was just an Elimination Chamber fodder show, wasn't it? It's just... Yeah, exactly. So w- in which case we will move on to Elimination Chamber. Excellent. And that was a seven minutes mat down again. Whoa. Yeah, nice. Um, so we started off with the Women's Chamber, um, which going out of memory, I'm going to try, which was Liv, Oscar, Raquel, Natalia, Carmella and Nikki Cross. Well done. Oh, God. Uh, I just literally went with women's chamber. Um, I like this for yeah. an off stars. It was a very fun chamber. Um, there was good spots like the pod getting smashed up. Um, yeah. Liv being mental. Um, Nikki Cross being mental. Oscar being mental. Rack Rodrigo is just smiling. Carmella trying to do the uh, the crap heel move, trying to pin everyone. Um, yeah. And it ended up with, um, well, Oscar was pretty much just dominant for the whole thing as soon as she got in. The crowd were well behind her. They, that's the only person they wanted to win. Um, yeah. Natalia didn't get as big as a pop as it, I expected. Uh, I just, yeah. No, no it was there. Know. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah, it's not the same. And it's, I feel sorry for her because, like, I feel like if it's a guy from Canada, it's yeah. completely different. It, it could be any guy. But with the women, I always think it's a little bit weaker and it's harsh. Yeah. Um, it's just wrestling fans. It's just, it, it is what it is. is. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, so Oscar ended up picking up the win um, after surviving all five members of the... Uh, the how, did, how did Carmella make it to the end? Because Mella is money. No, just stop it. Mella stop it. is money? No. Let me repeat. Mella is money. <laughs> now, um, so yeah, in locks and order, I believe, Raquel eliminated Nikki. Um, then, it yeah, we were discussing in the SmackDown, I think it was Oscar, that Oscar and Natalia eliminated Liv then. Then Carmella yep. eliminated Natalia randomly, and then I think it was Oscar and Carmella both took out Rodriguez because that's a good thing for Rodriguez that Super took her out. And then yeah, yep. Oscar eliminated money. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, good, good start to the show. Yeah, and followed this up by an ass match. Um, when we honest, <laughs> I was expecting a lot more. Les Lashley versus Lesnar. I was getting into it four minutes in. I was like, this is going, this is going well. Then there was yeah. just a hurt lock, and I was like, okay, how's Brock Lesnar going to break out of this? Because no one broke out. Oh, he load load him. Yeah. Okay, two stars, end of the match. And then Lesnar uh, got absolutely mauled, yeah. and Lashley got yeah. really angry and killed everyone. Yeah, it's so weird. It went four and a half minutes, and it was an exciting four and a half minutes until he kicked him in the nuts. Yeah, and it was just like, oh, I okay. can't believe you've put this on pay-per-view. Yeah, just it just happened, and it was just kind of a bit of a letdown because both of their matches have been pretty good. Um, yeah, and it's just setting up another match at some point, which you know now I just especially because there's going to be a gap because Lashley's not after Lesnar and Lesnar's going after. Yeah, it's just going to be weird. Yeah, um, I wanted to mention before we go up to the next match. Um, I really love the WrestleMania. Uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. Um, like Seth as the Joker. Uh, yeah, that and then um. Be- uh, Becky Lynch is trying to be Batman, and it was like the it yeah. was like me trying to be Batman, just literally going, Ugh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. And it. Seth was so good as the Joker, the dancing there for like that. Oh, it was. It was. I'm looking forward to. There's supposed to be more of them. It's like the old Holly WrestleMania goes to Hollywood. I'm hoping they do a lot more. Um, yeah, so good. Um, next yeah, up, great. Rollins yeah. is great. Becky Lynch yeah. is great as well. So, so good, bro. Next up, we had the uh, the Judgment Day, Balor and Ripley versus the Grit Couple, self-proclaimed. Um, yeah. I read it for in the quarters. I did really enjoy this match. Um, they had good dynamic with Ripley and Lynch, uh, Ripley and Phoenix. Um, yeah. And then obviously Balor and Edge were just kind of like the foil to that. Uh, Dom kept getting involved um, to eventually Ed was like, nah, fam. Um, and eventually Beth and Edge just overpowered uh, the Judgment Day and they won with the big rig, which I really yeah. liked at the uh, the revolver finish. Yeah, or but, the Shatter Machine. Yeah, Shatter something. Machine in WWE, but yeah, definitely the big rig. Yeah, yeah, it was a good match. I thought it did did what it needed to do. Yeah, and it's what we discussed on the podcast that we've... I don't know if we discussed it after or actually on the podcast where we said if they're going to win, Balor has to take the fall because Ripley has to look yeah. strong and that's what happened. Um, yeah. Overall, like I said, Doc, um, the only let down so far was Lesnar and uh, Brock. Uh, next up... Um, Le- Lesnar and Lashley. Well, not Lesnar, Lesnar and Brock. Brock's. That's what I'm going with. He fought himself <laughs> in that match. Um, pardon. Um, next up, we had the US Chamber. Um go for this again so it's theory reed priest gargano ford and rollins oh. um <laughs> i write this four and a quarter stars it was so good um yeah it's probably one of the best chambers since the first chamber that michael's won like the first chamber yeah. was epic but yeah this is one of the best ones um there were so many spots like um they had a spot where it was basically montez ford eliminated reed but that was after reed got battered by every man and his dog um yeah so they built reed up um damian priest eliminated gargano i predicted that in the um the fbl um that gargano was going out second so that made me happy uh yeah. montez ford then delete um eliminated priest so montez ford was like pushed to the moon in this match looked so good he did yeah. some good spots he did the spider-man like crawl up the stage and then flip over and then land um yeah. austin theory eventually eliminated ford and then austin theory eliminated seth rollins with the help of a young logan paul um so what happened <laughs> was theory rocked um ford and pinned him and then ford was injured 
the fans believed he was injured, like properly thought he yeah. was injured. I knew as soon as that was happening, there's, this is a reason the cage needs to be opened, yeah. like properly. Yeah. And here comes Logan Paul, buckshot lariat. Um, Still better than Adam Page's. Yeah. Um, and then Fury eliminates Rollins um, to retain the US title. So he stomped him as well. Yeah, stomped him. Uh, oh yeah, yeah God. Um, but yeah, yeah, one of the best chambers, and it went thirty minutes that chamber. I know, yeah, it was great. It was so, so good. Like, Triple H said in the... Because they do the press conferences after now, don't they, that Montez Ford is a star. Um, And I think he's just probably cemented his singles run now. (laughs) After that, because he was not. Yeah, you'd hope so. Um, Nothing happened on Raw this week. Um, But hopefully they are going to push towards it. Yeah. Um, And then the match we were all here to see. I rated my match a night just... Um, I think it was more. If this the story wasn't there, this wouldn't be my match at night because the story was there. It just added to it. I rated it four and a yeah. half stars. Who so had Roman versus Zayn? Um, yeah. just superb match. The storytelling in it. Um, so Roman was on top of for a lot of it. Um, obviously because Zayn is the weaker the weaker opponent to like the god that is Roman Reigns. Um, they kept yeah. showing Zami Zayn's wife in the crowd, and uh, so Roman was beating her up in front of the wife and going, you know, I'm doing this because of that, you, and then. The wife was saying he loved you, and it was like, ah. Oh. Um, yeah. And then Sami Zayn got over the top, kissed his wife, um, battered. Then the ref got knocked <laughs> out. Then Jimmy yep. came down, um, attacked um, Sami. Uh, Roman went to pin him, kicked out. Um, and then, weirdly, the ref was out. The next ref and Roman did a Superman punch, missed Zayn, and then it was like he was supposed to hit the ref. But he didn't yeah. hit the ref. I don't know what was happening there. I don't know if it was just kind of like trying to spook the fans by going, ah, you thought it was going to happen again. Then it did happen yeah. again. Um, yeah. So Reigns um, knocked the ref again. Um, and then he's grabbing the chair from Jimmy. And um, Reigns has got the chair. And then here comes Jay. Jay yeah. stops uh, Roman. And it's kind of like the same scene at the last show where Sammy stops Roman from hitting Kevin. Jay stops Roman from hitting uh, Zayn. Roman gives Jay the chair. Jay's like, like you can see he's wanting to hit Roman because he turns his back, but he doesn't. And then Sami Zayn hits a spear accidentally on Jay. Um, so that's clearly setting up now for the uh, the WrestleMania match. Because um, yep. there's no way he's going to take that lightly. Um, and eventually Roman picks up the win. Um, yeah. It's a clean finish, which is good in the essence that it kind of uh, cemented like Roman, like a clean finish-ish. Obviously, there was shenanigans for it, but the, the win was clean. Um, yeah. And what happens at the end is um, they're about to lay out um, Zayn, and then here comes KO. Fans go wild. Yeah. KO just destroys everyone. <laughs> like pop up power bombs, people through tables, stunners, stunners, Heyman. Um, everyone gets laid out, and then Sammy and Owens are looking at each other, and then Owen just leaves. Yeah. Um. So, yep, that was the end of um, Elimination Chamber, except for the Lesnar match. Everything else was very good. Yeah, it was a great show, apart from. And the good thing about the Lesnar match, even though it was crap, it was only four and a half minutes of crap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, for four minutes it was good. It was just you know, it shouldn't have been. Yeah, it's, it's the ending. It's the finish that ruins it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see where they go at Mania. Like I said, I'm, I'm like you. I'm holding on for Lesnar Gunther. Um, I think we're gonna get Lesnar Lashley Wyatt Gunther. Imagine. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of shenanigans in it. It's gonna be a lot of shenanigans. Yeah, they, they could get a four way out of that if they wanted to, but I just don't think it'd be good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll leave uh, Elimination Chamber behind, and we will crack straight on with Raw. We will. Um, so Raw is war, as they say. Um, so we had Zayn come out. Um, it was in Ottawa, I think it was Canada, uh, still yep. in Canada. Um, big ripple, big um, entrance once again. He cuts the shit and just calls out Kevin Owens because obviously Kevin outs him. Um, yeah. Kevin basically just said he didn't do it for Zayn. He did it for Zayn's family. Um, but Zayn didn't... Zayn watched Kevin get battered and watched so his family watched Kevin get battered. So he was quite annoyed about that. Um, so Owens is... It, it's pretty much the te- teasing the... Owens is not going to try and help Zayn anymore. He just did it for that one time. And then the a- ending line, which I really liked, he said, if you need help, just ask Jay. Um, yeah. So the, it's it's a very good setup. I'm going to ask... Very looking forward to the setup for this. 
Yeah, because we know it's going to be tag titles, don't we? And like anyone who didn't think it was going to go that way, just where have you been? <laughs> I don't know. It's just because there's a lot of stuff, especially now it's coming out a lot of like not spoilers, but like thingy that WWE's worried about how popular Zayn is and it might ruin yeah. the main event. Um, mm. So they've got to figure out something. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they'll just throw him in like they did with Brian and he'll win, but yeah, there's yeah. a few rumours because they obviously there's two nights. There's another rumour that Zayn might um they might do one night with one, one the night with the other. Um yeah. I'd rather that than a triple threat. Yeah, I mean it makes more sense for Cody to win it and then defend against Zayn the night after. Yeah, I love. I'm get, I'm getting to this point where I don't want Roman to lose. I'd love Roman just yeah. to clean everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um. I mean, because we know they want to split the titles. Yeah. But feasibly, if you do Rhodes and Reigns first night for both titles, and then second night you do Rhodes and Zayn for both uh, for one title. Yeah. You could split them that way. Yeah, it's it's either that or Rhodes challenges Reigns for the Raw one, and then Sam Zayn challenges Reigns for the SmackDown one, and he loses both of them. Uh, and he just has a bad weekend. <laughs> yeah, or he beats Rhodes, but he's knackered and loses to Zayn. One of them two. Yeah. Um, there's trouble that Money in the Bank's not around anymore because um, it would have been perfect. That's how Zayn, someone like Zayn, could have picked up the win. Um, yeah. Next up, we had Baron Corbin. So this was happening in Picture in Picture. I don't really watch Picture in Picture, but um, Baron Corbin attacks Sami Zayn, obviously from last week, and the whole like um, Roman. Uh, he's just getting annoyed for it. Um, yeah. And Zayn, uh, Baron Corbin said, like the story is completely over now. Um, yeah. And then they had a match. I read it two and three quarters. It was fine. It was a good matchup. Yeah. Um, didn't it did what it needed to do? Yeah, um, yeah. It wasn't spectacular. Which is all you um, Baron Corbin loses again, and yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, Baron Corbin is a massive loser. I'm I'm just hoping, but Mass Corbin comes back. That so was my favourite Corbin, the... Stain Corbin. Yeah, yeah, um, he's like dishevelled man. They were on about it on the roster reveal on 2K, because um, I was watching yeah. that, uh, the two-hour one. They were on about uh, that they should be unlock Baron Corbin, but Mass Corbin. And it, yeah. you just every time you lose, his rating goes down a bit, and he just becomes <laughs> more and more dishevelled. So eventually yeah. he's just walking down to the ramp, he trips over and busts himself open as he's walking in the ring. Nice. Nice. Um, Ripley, at the had an interview with Ripley, um, basically, new champ! That's pretty much that whole promo. Um, yeah. And she's going to speak to Charlotte on Friday. I, I kind of liked that Dominic threatened Baron Saxton with prison violence. Yeah, I but it's, it's, <laughs> I've got, it's got to the past where I was bored with Dominic, and now it's just that funny because he keeps yeah. going on about like Everyone knows he was in there for two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's yeah. a reference so to good. prison. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just so, so good. Um, next up, we had Austin Fury. Um, Austin Fury's basically called out John Cena, and I'm here for it. Um, yeah. So it's going to be a good. Oh, he, it's he's back in two weeks, Cena. Um, so it's going to be a good match, I believe. Um, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Um, and he's got face Edge tonight. It was open. Um, except for the open challenge. Yeah. Um, we had Ali versus Ziggler. Um, I read it's two stars. Um, because it didn't last long and it just had the shot factor of Ali just out of nowhere reversing one move and picking up the win, just like a quick roll up. Yeah, I I predicted this on in one of the servers we're in that Ali had win because Ziggler it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ziggler's Ziggler. there so to enhance. Looking the to get, now, right? Yeah, if they're looking at getting Ali back, then he needed to win that match. Yeah. Uh, Miz backstage, he's got something special happening on Miz TV in next week. I don't care. Yeah, no same. Cody, um, Cody was in the ring. He's about to um, discuss the the whole Roman Reigns thing, um, but then here comes Paul Heyman on the screen. Paul Heyman basically says um, he's like in a net brace, so he's not allowed to come out himself. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get the United game up on the left screen here. Uh, <laughs> So, basically, he was discussing that, obviously, it's going to be a tragedy, Rhodes winning the title. He was basically going, like, are you going to be okay with not being at home? Then he was listing, like, you've got these shows, you've got to do this, you're going to do that, like, you've got to do this. Are you going to be okay not being home, like, only being home, like, 60 days of the week? Um, yeah. And he says, like, Roman Reigns is fine with that because he's a happily married man. 
You know, um, who's going to look after your wife? It's, don't worry, I'm not going to do a cliche and say Roman's going to do anything to your wife. But you know what? Yeah. I'm not happily married. <laughs> so, you know, you got the walrus coming to uh, to do your wife, basically, yeah. is the old uh, <laughs> the spiel of that. Um, and then he just drops the mic and Cody just is seething in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they both played it off really well. Like, Heyman's doing Heyman things, but Cody sold it so well. Yeah, and then he's saving the ring and he just basically says, what I've said, what I've done, I'm here to finish the story. Yeah. So Sam Punk's going to win the title. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar versus Nikki up next. Two and a half stars. Um, average match. Um, Nikki smiled and tapped out. It was weird. Um, and then we had like a weird because Bianca was on like commentary or sitting down she came into the ring and it was kind of a face off and then Oscar spat out mist but just down herself and then Bianca's like oh crap <laughs> I might yeah. actually die Um, I'm looking forward to the match I still think Bianca's going to win it because I feel Ripley's going to beat Charlotte because that, that story is more of their pushing that Charlotte beat Ripley at the last main year as this is a random match they could do both titles they could both women could lose but I don't expect both titles to uh, swap I kind of hope that they get it off Belair. Um, I think she's better chasing than she is as champion. Yeah, there's not another challenger, is there, after... Um, no. Yeah. And Oscar, they've brought her back as Car- like Karna, which is basically how she was previously, so I'm hoping they do it. Um, yeah. Then Mella's backstage. Um, the uh, the announcer asks, uh, which I thought was hilarious, have you got a, have you got a plan B to get to WrestleMania? Carmella's just like, it's been two days, leave me alone. Um, <laughs> and it basically, she's annoyed at Oscar's, and she's going to attack Oscar, supposedly. Doubt it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Rollins is up next. He's discussing the, the general gist of what's happening, and the Logan Paul's attacked him two times, but now he's going to murder Logan Paul, <laughs> which is basically where this is going. Um, yeah. he's going into his psycho Joker character, which um, it's a bit on yeah. the nose with the promo, but um, we'll go there. And then what's worrying me is Omos yeah. versus Lesnar. Yeah. I'm hoping that isn't a thing. Yeah, I know, same. Um, I don't understand why this has happened, and that's why I didn't really reference it when we were talking about mm. the SmackDown stuff. With, I forgot with it happened involved somewhere until else. I literally read this. No. I didn't want this to happen, so I'm just manifesting that it never did. Um, and then we'll see. But yeah. yeah not I'm, I'm hoping, please. if worst case scenario, I'm hoping Lashley attacks with him and Lesnar again. I'd rather Lesnar yeah. Lashley 15 than Omos versus Lesnar 1. Yeah. <laughs> and the worrying thing is, I think Omos would win. Yeah, I think they'd push Omos to win it. And that'll yeah. be his big win. And then he'll be here forever. I remember yeah. a fateful time where a certain Scottish man said to me at the start of the podcast days that Omos would be gone after WrestleMania. And I went, no, Omos is here forever. <laughs> and now where's the and Scottish man? That seems like shade that does that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah no. it, it's, it's one of them where we were just wrong. I agreed. I thought Omos would be Yeah, gone. I just sent it. Just He's, he's seven foot 85. Like, you know, they're just going to push him until his knees give way. Um, we had Rollins versus The Miz up next. They're at two and a half stars. Um, it lost. Uh, this is not a usual thing for WWE. Uh, the Miz lost by referee stoppage because Rollins yeah. just kept curb stomping him. It was like watching yeah. 2K game and just had two finishes. Um, yeah. And then Rollins just looked wide eyed. So, yeah, he's, you've, he's unlocked crazy Rollins. I'm hoping if they do Logan Paul versus Rollins, I want it to be some kind of hardcore aspect. Because you can't have yeah. a singles match with Crazy Rollins because it would just make no sense. Because if he's that annoyed yeah. with him, he doesn't want to just have a straight shoot singles match. No. There's got to be some sort of, like, I don't know, stipulation. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had Adam Pearce um, and the Chelsea Green saga. Love Chelsea Green. She wasn't even there, and it was hilarious. So Adam Pearce was on the phone, and Chelsea Green's just going mental at him because she somehow ended up in the wrong venue. Um, and she's going, can you sort this out, please? And he goes, well, we're there next week. You can sort that out now. Yeah. Look. And then she yeah. starts screaming and going this, and Ellen Pierce is going, it's breaking up. Ottawa Connection uh, walks yeah. off. Um, she's not even on screen. It was funny. Yeah. Um, 
what I liked about the next part was, uh, as I said, I'm liking the um, Triple M Omos, uh, not Omos, OT, OT's um, bit. Um, Gable was getting annoyed that, you know, he's got the model looks and he's going, he's preparing. And then Bronson Reed just walks up behind him and goes, is this how you prepare for a match with me? I'm going to murder you. <laughs> and that's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had Ding Dong Hello um, with Damage Control in its entirety. So Bailey was interviewing Damage Control. She was about to start interviewing, and here comes Becky Lynch. And she yeah. was going on about basically, I've lost my chance to fight for the title, the main titles. But how, how's about I take the tag team titles away from you two? I knew where this is go. This was going, but Bailey was going. You've got no friends though, Becky. And I was like, Bailey, did yeah. you not just see what happened like two weeks ago? Um, yeah. And then here comes Leah, bum 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 bum, <laughs> and then she comes down, um, and there's going to be a tag team title match. Um, she gets Bailey gets goaded into accepting it for for damage control. So, yeah. but it's going to be next week. So I think what's yeah. going to happen is they're going to win the titles, and then damage control are going to win them back at Mania. Probably because I can't see Lita losing now. Before Mania, I can see it being a Mania match as well. Yeah, yeah, like a rematch. Or the only other thing, but I've heard it's been scrapped, is because it would have made sense to debut a here. Is that Damage Control cheat to win, and then Stratus comes out, and then you have a three on three at Mania. But I've heard that's been scrapped now, and it would have made sense to have a in Canada. Yeah. So yeah. Um, who knows? Um, God knows. Where does Bailey's match come in at Mania? She's probably like. One so of yeah, the best I, it's, it might still be a six way. They might just have someone else that's not Stratus. Yeah. It makes sense yeah. to have Stratus, but uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. Um, next up, I oh, like where this is going weirdly because it's so out of the blue, weird. Like basically, Nikki Cross has been following Candice for ages and stalking her. Yeah. And then um, Candice. Like Nikki Ross is looking really sad, and then Candace comes up to her. And a lot, I genuinely felt sad for Nikki Ross because she looked, I, she yeah, genuinely looked horrifyingly sad. Um, yeah. And then Candace is going, "What are you doing? Why are you doing all this?" And then Nikki just wouldn't speak to her, and then she just leaned into her and like proper like whispered in her ear, and then just walked off like a child, like a six-year-old child. And she went, "None of my friends are here." Yeah, um, apparently what she whispered to her was, "All her friends are gone, and she's yeah. alone." Which is um. A hint at, I think, Sanity's coming back. Yeah. Because Eric Young's been hired, hasn't he, by WWE? Yes. And Big Damo could just be hired at any point by WWE. So, yeah. um, I can see that um, Candice is probably going to be friend Nikki, and then Nikki's going to turn with Sanity. That's what I can see happening. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're going to bring Wolf back. I'd love for Alexander Wolf to come back as well. Um, but uh, I can see it being Sanity. Or a different yeah. variation of sanity. Definitely Eric Young. Um, maybe someone like Donovan yeah. Dijakic. Um, Reed versus Gable. Um, this was decent. I rated two and a half stars, but it was decent for what it was. It was just... Um, I didn't, I, I like the Triple M thing, but I also don't like it in this match because it was just kind of like Gable was just watching Maxine Dupree flirt with Otis and then he got rolled up and battered. Um, and then yeah. splashed like he was in control for the majority of it and I enjoyed that it's just I don't like that ending yeah Um, there was a thing with Elias which I don't even know what it was what have I written here Elias Bobby Smash oh Bobby Smash <laughs> um, uh, Elias was out there and then Bobby Lashley absolutely wrecked him that's what Bobby Smash meant Um, hit him in the hurt yeah. lock and then he was basically saying that no one can break the hurt lock Um, yeah. unless you get low blowed um, and then Edge had a, a promo before going out. It was pretty much just like, I'm from Canada. This is Canada. Canada. Um, Edge versus Fury. I rate this highly. I haven't wrote what I wrote it on here. I'm just going to quickly check on my um, my reviews now. Um, but I really enjoyed the match. Um, Edge looked really strong in it. Um, yeah. And um, let's have a look. What did I rate it? Let me uh, segue into this. Um, so I rated it three and a quarter stars. Um, yeah. So yeah, Edge looked very strong in it, um, and he was just cost the win by Balor um, distracting him, and then um, Edge loses to Fury. Um, and then what happens after this? Finn Balor just ends the night by doing fifty-five coup de gras on Edge. 
just wouldn't yeah. stop. I was like, okay, you've hit two now. And he's like, okay, I'll stop. Now I'm going to hit a third one. And it was just yeah. like, Crew de Gras, one of them's painful to take, surely, let alone three of them. Yeah. It's just like, Edge seems to have never ended feuds. Like, any feud he's in, he's yeah. never ended. Yes, we'll never be over. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, Raw was fine. Like there wasn't, there was never, there wasn't proper letdown matches. Though like, every the matches were over average, all right. Yeah. Like Edge versus Fury was, was good was for better. a main. Yeah, it was better match wise, definitely better. And the stories uh, just were good on it. Even as I said, like the Candice Nicky one, I'm interested in. Um, yeah. Rollins pole, Chelsea Green's brilliant. She won even there. Co- Cody's been pushed to my yeah. liking now. Like it's not, it's yeah. still a bit like. Dusty Rhodes centric, but it's not as bad. Yeah. Heyman's kind of no. swaying it, so you need to not be Dusty Rhodes continuously. Um, yeah. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, so, well, I mean, that's WWE for the week. So that's SmackDown, Elimination Chamber, and Raw. So let's move on to the other company now, AEW. Let's get into Dynamite from last night. Or Dynamite. Monday. Um, so match of the night straight up uh, Cassidy versus Utah. it was better than it had deserved to be when I saw that match up I read it for him three quarters yeah. like um, it started with like pinning combinations where they're trying to outdo each other Utah Cassidy tried to pin Utah with um, his seatbelt pin and then later on um, Utah tried to pin Cassidy with the mousetrap um, he was trying to like a bit like showmanship and a bit of fancy prant to Utah but then um Claudio Castagnoli comes down, basically slaps Uta and goes, violence, please. Uta comes in, absolutely hammers um, Cassidy, whamming him around the ring. Um, Claudio disappears after he's, de- he's just decided that this is good enough. Um, and then Uta nearly picks up the win a few times. Cassidy nearly picks up the win a few times, but then he kind of just out over Cassidy kind of experience side. He hits Uta with a Superman punch. Uta just kicks out. Um, and he hits him with a really cool, like, I've never seen it before. For, um, so Utah was on his like knees and he hit him with like a diving Superman punch um, to pick yeah. up the win. Um, just great opener. Um, both guys, look, Cassidy, like, it wasn't as prancy as he normally is, so it was good. And Wheeler Utah's, like, as I said, he's very generic Wheeler, but like, he has good matches. I, I kind of think you need to get this belt off Orange Cassidy now. The trouble because... with it is the TNT title, though, that it's that's passed around too much. Yeah, no, but Cassidy's had this title for ages. How long has he actually had it for? Or, well, um, you continue well, segue. Didn't, didn't, uh, didn't he win it at Forbid- Forbidden Door? He might have done, yeah, so that would have been June. Let me have a look. Because um, he won it from Pack, didn't he, actually? So he might 134 not. days, so he's had it three months. It's been a long three months. He's also defended it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times. Yeah, get it off him. Like, it's literally, like, I like Orange Cassidy, and I like the like what he does and everything like that. It's entertaining. But titles need to be on wrestlers who aren't just there for the entertainment purposes. It needs to be on actual, like, proper over people. People might like Cassidy. I don't mind his matches. He just doesn't need a belt to do what he does. Yeah. Um, we had Uno and Paige backstage. That wasn't supposed to rhyme. Um, basically, Uno was just basically saying Dark Order's been a laugh in the stock, but we're going to prove we're not a laugh in stock. And he's told Paige that he shouldn't come out. Like he's going to face Moxie on his own. Um, yeah. It was a decent promo for Uno because Uno is Uno. Um, he's not yeah. been built very well. And then they brought up that Uno hasn't lost in eight months, and he's on a nineteen match <laughs> winning streak, and he's also won eighty. Like this is going to be a, Moxie's a hundredth win if he wins. If Uno yeah. wins, it's going to be his 87th win in AEW. Wow. How many matches have been on Dynamite or Rampage? Yeah. Probably about, about 10. Five. I'd go with a max. <laughs> and I don't think... Oh, yeah. Barcelona had a penalty. Oh, De Gea <laughs> saved it. And then he got... Oh, it went in. Oh, anyway. Oh. Um, yeah, he saved it. But he so saved he it, into, save it. He saved it. in. He basically got his hand to it. And then it went in. He went off his right. hand upwards. Um, right. And hit the crossbar and went in. Ah, oh, that's depressed. Um, football commentary. Uh, Starks um, came down and he, he's issuing an open challenge for uh, Revolution. And yep. there's some hungry people backstage. Um, so whoever wants to come out um, can sign this contract. So here comes Jericho. Um, 
Jericho <laughs> speaking some crap at the top, and then out comes Peter Avalon. And, <laughs> and Peter Avalon's going, yeah, I'm going to do this. Jericho just Judas vex him and goes, no. Um, so Peter Avalon's <laughs> still around. Um, and then Jericho gets goaded into signing the contract, and he's also signed it, saying that he's going to... Um, Jazz Society's banned from ringside, so it's just going to be a straight down Jericho versus uh, yeah. Starks. Wonderful. Yeah. The never-ending stories. Um, next up, the acclaimed versus the firm. I read two and a quarter. Meh. I don't care yeah. about the firm at all. The acclaimed, I don't. I find fine, but the Gun Club rivalry is a bit pants, and that seems to be going on for the rest of eternity now as well. This is, yep. as I said, we discuss every week. This is the trouble with Dynamite. You either have like uh, feuds that are built up too quickly, you have feuds that are stale because. You should have, like most feuds should be four weeks to eight weeks, depending on if you've had a big match, and then you can have another four weeks afterwards. You need yeah. that big, yeah. Whereas the, it's been like at least like every three, it's every three months pay views, aren't they? So it's it's a long yeah, while. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, that that was a thing. Um. Christian comes down nearly, but then Jungle Boy's attacks him, and then Christian and Jungle Boy are battering each other, and then Jungle Boy kind of over to, um is about to concerto Christian. And then Christian gets a low blow in, and um, that rivalry is continuing. Why does this feel like it's been going on for over a year? Because it has. Because he was managing them, weren't he, prior to this and stuff like that, so he's been with them for ages. I know he's been with them for ages, but they've only actually been at each other's throats. It's been, what, how long has it been? Like, Because they were friends for a bit. Yeah, like, um, um, it's been a while. The feud, itself, the feud itself feels like it's gone on for a year. It just needs to stop. Let me have a look. Like, so Christian, uh, he fought him September was when the actual match happened. Right, but so and the match lead, leading up to that, he must have turned on him about yeah, two months. Yeah, so it's about five months from the match. So, yeah, about two, yeah, so about seven months that rivalry is going on. Uh, yes, um, next up, we had Soraya versus um, Sky Blue. I read it two stars. It was just a weak matchup. Sky Blue yeah. looked really good in it, and Soraya looked really bad because they made Sir, um, Tony Storm jump in a lot to save Soraya, and it's kind of like, fair enough, Sky Blue's like an up-and-comer, but not this much of an up-and-comer. Like, Soraya should be walking through Sor uh, uh, Sky Blue. Uh, Sky Blue's had a couple of good matches, though. I remember she had a decent showing against Tony Storm on a Dynamite. Yeah, but it's kind of like... I remember saying that she shouldn't be going that long with the champion. Yeah. Um... But yes, I I do actually like Sky Blue. I think no, she's, she's good. good. It's just that Soraya is coming back and she's getting like this. Like Sky Blue is not like middle of the road AEW at the moment. Like Soraya should be facing struggling against top talent. She shouldn't be struggling against someone like Sky Blue. It's the same I as Tony Storm. She not struggled. No, she shouldn't have done because Tony Storm wrestles and has been. And she was the champ. Don't don't forget, Soraya's been like out of the ring for God knows how long. She's only had about four matches. So, I mean, you can spin it that way and make a story from it and just be like, she only struggled because she's not used to wrestling all the time. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, she'll probably just kick her ass. <laughs> yeah. And it will be a walkover. But, yeah, I think you can you can make an excuse for her struggling a little bit in the fact that she's not wrestled much in... But is that where AEW are going with it? Is that what Maybe. they think the story is, or are we trying to make the story out of that? I'm, I'm trying to make the story make sense. Because, <laughs> um, yeah... <laughs> don't need to say anything else. Um, but yeah, so that um, happened. Then they were about to spray paint and lose her on her. Um, but then here comes um, there comes Britt Baker and Hater. They run them off. And then they're up halfway up the stage and here comes Ruby Solo. And you're thinking, oh, Ruby Solo is going to kind of attack them and it's going to be a brawl. But Solo just stands at the top of the ramp, looks down at Hater and goes like that a few yeah. times. So it's going to be Hater versus Solo at um, Revolution. Until we get to the promo in a bit. Um, yeah. So, Danielson's in the ring at this point. Um, he was going just how much um, MJF just said, like, just, he hates me for some reason. Um, yeah. And then MJF comes down. And I don't know what they're trying to get out of MJF AEW. Last week, he's on about flipping accidental... I don't know if it was last week or the week before, with the accidental murder um, yeah. nearly, where he's like, a woman's doing the deed, and then he ends up doing crimes. This week he's saying that um, he, ne he was close to um, his wife, his partner's left him, which I didn't know of. Um, yeah. And, you know, he's close to suicidal, like he's close to getting this, this bout's just keeping him and he's got his pills. And then 
Brian Danielson's like ruining is a terrible person because you know Brian Danielson's one of the most wrestlers that has had m- the most ke- like concussions, and wrestling's more important than his family. You know he doesn't care a lot if his kids are not going to have a father as long as he gets to wrestle. Um, and he said um, MGF's trying to make it that he's really angry that Brian Danielson's got everything that MGF doesn't have, which is a family. And I was going, yeah. where has this come from? Like it's a really good promo. How it was all set out was really good, but the the bro- the idea beyond the promo makes no sense to me. Like it just seems yeah. like re- I don't know what they're trying to do with MGF. Like last week murdering women, this week suicide. Yeah, it's like he's going it's, down it's, a weird, crazy path. Yeah, they're just trying to make him come across as unstable. Yeah. Um, but he's gonna. He um, did a cool thing at the end where he started speaking to Birdie and Buddy, and he said that he's gonna rip um, Dada's arm off, which I did like at the yeah. end of that. Um, and then there was a massive brawl. They both went for it, both battering each other. Um, got separated. Brian Danielson broke loose, got separated again, and battered him. Um, overall, it was fun. Um, go on promo. Backstage, we had Hater um, just discussing the whole what's going on with Soraya and uh, the other girl. Um, Tony Storm, Storm, that's the one. Um, I was on about Tony Storm prior to that, but um, then she discusses that um, R- Ruby is a deserved number one champion holder, but then also Soraya's. I don't know how Soraya's a deserves a title spot. Um, so it's going to be a triple threat. How does Ruby Soho deserve a title match? If I missed something, she's won a lot of matches and she also won the Fatal Four Way the other week. Right, um, okay. Where she picked up the win, or triple threat, sorry, she beat both Hater and not um, DMD and Thingy, didn't she? Uh, as long as they can actually justify it and don't just say she deserves it with no context. Yeah, that's no, fine. that's that's me that's saying she deserves it. I don't know if she does deserve it, but that was, that's me yeah. pulling the story from where I can see it. Ah, oh, the streams yeah. disappeared. Um, next up, we had the battle at 10, like 55 tag team battle royale. Um, I rated two stars. It was so long, it went three, two or three breaks. Um, Aussie yeah. Open were in there. Aussie Open got eliminated during a break. That made me sad instantly. Um, and it ended up with Satnam Singh kept helping um, Lethal and Jarrett stay in the ring. Um, and eventually they eliminated the last two. It was just ass. But it's going to be. Um, yeah. So now it's going to be the Gun Club versus the Claim versus Jeff Jarrett and Lethal versus another tag team, um, which still needs to win a battle royal. <laughs> it's going to be a what good match. Reviews? One of the reviews I'm looking at here says match time too long. <laughs> it was so long. <laughs> it was like, but it was just like so long. I can't, there's no other. <laughs> it was so long. Um, yeah. <laughs> so long. Um, yeah. And then what we were looking forward to, the big announcement by Tony Khan. That wasn't by Tony Khan. Yeah. So it's that big. We're going to get Adam Cole to do it. There's going to be an all-access yeah. thing after Dynamite every... Oh, Tony. Why is this not being announced on Twitter or something? You have a habit, like Tony, of announcing crap that I don't want to know about that could be easily announced on Twitter. Yeah. Like, announce, like, you know, if he suddenly went, oh, CM Punk's coming back, I'd be like, fair enough. Okay. That That's something to announce. Yeah. But, or he, but he announces stuff like, oh, by the way, Fight Forever's coming out next week. And it's like, does that need to be on TV? Yeah. Like, come on, Tony. But yeah, um, so yeah, that was that. Um, and then the Guns and the Jarrett's, uh, Jarrett's team were trying to discuss how they're going to help each other and Jarrett's like saying it's not happening. Um, main event time, this was better than expected. More of that just because Evil Uno got absolutely bladed open. Um, yeah. like Absolutely blood everywhere. Um, I rated three stars like just for the visual effect of the end. of uh, Uno was in the bulldog joke. And he must have been choking him too hard because he was bleeding a bit, but then it suddenly like started squirting on his arm because I'm guessing like <laughs> he was like his veins were going, he, like full on like drenching his arm in blood. It was horrible, but good, but horrible, but good. Um, and then yeah, Moxley like Uno looked pretty decent in it for a bit of it, um, but it was just I couldn't gather Uno as because how he's been built, I can't gather him as a challenger. Um, and it ended with Moxley keeping in the choke um, after the match. Then here comes the other Dark Order. Then here comes the BCC. And then here comes Paige. And there's an all-out brawl. And Paige has got barbed wire. And it's Moxley. And Moxley's bleeding. And it all goes off air with blood. Yeah. Dynamite. As it always does in a John Moxley match. Texas Deathmatch. Uh, 
But yes, I mean, not not the greatest dynamite, but also not the worst. No, it wasn't terrible. Um, so no, we're uh, we're happy that this week's wrestling has now been reviewed. Um, anything that you want to add leading into like Mania? Is there anything you want to see at Mania that's perhaps not been teased or anything so far? I still want to see Austin. I was so happy yeah. with Austin last week. I want to see Austin again. Last week, last month, last week, last year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was so okay. happy with Austin last year that I wanted to see him in some kind of capacity again. Yeah, I think I'd quite like to see another Austin match. Uh, purely because I wasn't keen on the match in the first place, and then he looked that good. Yeah. That I thought, if he did this like once a year until he was physically couldn't do it, then I'd be happy with that. He's training um, as well, isn't he? There's been, he's been training, so I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows. Can you imagine if they do Rock Austin? <laughs> Like Rock, uh, Rock yeah. comes down and wants to challenge Roman, and then he's gone like, "Well, you, well, you can't." And here comes Austin. It's like, "I'll fight you." Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nostalgia ticket selling shit. I would That's instantly put it as main event. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it after after main event one night, wouldn't it? Have you tried to buy tickets for Money in the Bank yet? I get it. it's stupid. Have you seen what they're doing? Yeah. Combo tickets. You can't buy single tickets. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't. No, well, you can. They go on. They get released tomorrow. Oh, it's just like, um, literally. It was, yeah, it was couple. a pre-sale for combo tickets. Ah, uh, okay. Because I've been trying to find Wednesday. out. Yeah, there's no chance no, tomorrow. Was, I don't know. It's going to be. I don't think we'll be going to this. Yeah, look, I'll um, try, but there's no chance. Yeah, I'm going to try, but no, I'm I'm not confident. And it happens to come out when I'm on the driving lesson. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm going to be. Um, good luck, me again. I'm going to be budding someone at that time at work. Uh, oh, so you? luckily, nice. I'm not on the phones. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to be concentrating yeah. on their call. I'm going to get sacked. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, no, I wouldn't do that. I'm, I think I'll make sure I'm on lunch at that point because, you know, I'll fucking, yeah. I need full concentration on 17 lunch. different platforms. Oh, 12 on, like 12 at lunch. Christ, I'll have only been like in for two hours. Then. I start well, at eight. No. So, do you yeah, know? Yeah, I start yeah. At eight. yeah, so yeah. I, lunch, I don't have my lunch to like. <laughs> yeah, and no, that makes sense though. But yeah, um, um, yeah, I'm going to try, but it's not going to happen. But then there's yeah, there is but... also going to be AEW who's going to be here this year, so yeah, I want to get to. I'd like to do both. I'd yeah. like to do both. Um, and I've got, the good thing about Money in the Bank is I've got free accommodation in London. So have I. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you'll, have to, you'll have to you'll have to speak to Lauren. <laughs> who's Lauren? Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, it's going to pain me because if I really wanted to go. Everyone's going to be trying to go to Money in the Bank, so it'll probably be easier to try and get SmackDown tickets, but I don't want to go to SmackDown. No, me neither. If I'm, good, if I'm doing it, I'd like to do yeah. so, but if I had a choice of doing Money in the Bank. Yeah. It's because the O2 is not as big as the... Yeah, why like, have they gone? Oh, 60,000 seater. Okay, this year we're going 18. Yeah. No, it makes no sense. Like, because they sold out... Yeah. Yeah, they sold out in Cardiff. So, the, like, this is in a capital city. How is this not going to sell out, like... They could have even done Wembley. So or stupid. Spurs. They could have gone yeah. to Tottenham's ground. It would have, like, even if it didn't sell out, like, say, yeah. 78,000 is still massive. Yeah. Oh, it's... Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Ah, well. But, yeah, we're going to end the show there. Um, so, what you need to do is follow us at the HCW Show on Twitter. Follow us and subscribe, like, comment, and do all the fun stuff on our YouTube channel. We also have Instagram and Twitch channels to follow. Been doing a lot of streaming recently, mainly UNDP, uh, of Project Zomboid. So get involved. Go and go look at the, the Twitch streams when they're on because they are quite fun. Uh, but, yeah, we are trying to be a lot more active. As Ray said earlier, he's done a, uh, another interview today, which will be coming out. Uh, DP's got one in the pipeline. There's indie reviews coming out as well. So keep your eye on the channel for all those. But that is a good night from me. We've got to say something bad about DP. We haven't done much. I, I feel like we don't need to anymore. Purely because like, whenever he's on screen, it's bad enough. There we go. Bye, and that is, a good, that is a good bye from me. Bye, DP, Dumas. <laughs> See you on the next one, guys. Adios.